tonight we are i mean this is how do i put it uh we on automatic in terms of you know the uh the, the rifling uh the weaponry we're using tonight we're just going all out and what we're going to do is cover and debunk a number of different myths about black men and i wanted to get bgs up, uh, up in here with me to do it because uh, it's a lot more fun for one uh the <laughs> off the brother we're talking about it but there's a lot of info to cover um so i wanted to kind of get that in so let me start here let's see what else we got so we got the male rape information sheet now this is this is older i made this a number of years ago because i wanted to consolidate all the data i was running across on black men and rape and put it in one document and you know i can i can you know i can send you guys this uh i need to remember to put this in the, the description box so you guys can remind me if i don't I don't think I have it set up right now to do it, but here's a couple of things. So, you know, just to kind of let you know, um, so from 1930 to 2000, well, first and foremost, you can see the first bullet, 2.78 million men in the U S have been victims of sexual assault or rape. And that was known in 1998. Yeah. But nobody talks about that from 1930 to 2012, the FBI defined forcible grape. I guess you got to say that on YouTube mm -hmm. for data collecting purposes as car the carnal knowledge of a female forcibly and against her will. So understand mm -hmm. the importance of that. The very definition right. of R-A-P-E mm -hmm. is that it is the for the carnal knowledge of a female. Yeah. So what kind of information are you gonna get on males when the very definition of the act is tied to female bodies? Mm. Yeah. They ignored generations worth of data about men because it didn't fit the definition. Right? And it says eventually localities began to rebel against that limited gender bound definition. In 2010, Chicago reported 86,776 cases of rape, but mm -hmm. used its own broader definition. So the FBI left out. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Finally, in 2012, the FBI revised its definition and focused on penetration mm -hmm. with no mention of female or force. Yeah. Right. And so if you go through these various bullet points, you'll see various data points. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But the one thing I want to put up to you is America incarcerates its citizens more than any other country in the world. Right. And that said, when you put like, because I think at the time I did this, there were about 200,000, I think it was about 220,000 women incar incarcerated and over 2.2 million men. Right. Sounds so when you right. had in prison, Mm -hmm. Right when you and there was a new category called made to penetrate right. that was created uh, in the last you know decade or so because it had to you know account for you know what was really happening versus the, what people wanted to define you know you know rape as and I say in the last bullet point when you add up made to penetrate cases rape by the new FBI definition and mm -hmm. prison sexual assault slash rape statistics men statistically black men especially experience rape at much higher rates than women annually. Now, part of the reason you'll never hear that, or at least you haven't heard that anywhere else is because nobody wants to add in prison numbers, mm -hmm. but more importantly, nobody wants to take resources away from women. Women have cornered, feminists in particular, have mm -hmm. cornered the market on data around sexual assault and RAPE. Yeah. This is the underlying reason why nobody wants to talk about males. Because if you really start to put the numbers out on males, yeah, somebody will have to ask at some point, why is all of this money and all these resources only going to females? Exactly. All, all those uh, nonprofit organizations that depend on that kind of money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So again, when you add up the different categories and most importantly, when you add in prison data, mm -hmm. It changes the the discussion in ways that even academics and scholars don't want to deal with. Mm. Now, there's a line here. If you go up uh, to, let me see. This is about four bullet points from the bottom. It says the CDC finding um, that women rape uh, great men as often as men grape women. Now, this mm. is actually a quote, and I had I got into an argument with um, I don't know. I think he's a sociologist. I don't remember what his particular occupation is. He really went off on me and this is why right mm -hmm. um let me go ahead and show you this that quote is actually pulled from a time.com 
article. Mm -hmm. Okay. Article's title, CDC's great numbers are misleading. Mm. Right? And when you go to the actual quote, right? It says, and now the real surprise. When asked about experiences in the last 12 months, men reported being made to penetrate either by physical force yeah. or due to intoxication at virtually the same rates as women reported rape. Both 1.1% mm -hmm. in 2010 and 1.7 and 1.6% respectively in 2011. In other words, if being made to penetrate someone was counted as great, mm -hmm. and why shouldn't it be, then the headlines could have focused on a truly sensational CDC finding that women great men as often as men great women. Mm. So the scholar I was debating with said, "Well, you cited it as a CDC finding, but that's just what they said in the in the magazine in the in the time.com article. That's not the CDC statement." Mm -hmm. But you'll notice the reason I read the sentence prior is it shows you the numbers at the end of the sentence and that's right. why the journalist yeah. made the statement. So he's yeah. right, I should have listed um the, and I actually did cite the article when I made that bullet point statement. Mm -hmm. But he's picking on a, a small little issue to deflect from the reality right. yeah. that men do actually experience this in much higher numbers than we were told. So yeah. in case you couldn't see the screen, you know, this is the sentence here I'm focusing on. I will put the link for this in the chat. Those of you who are interested in looking at this article, this is the only article I found from time of its kind. Mm -hmm. And since this article, which was written in 2014 i haven't seen anything like it since no you would probably won't <laughs> they ran from and, this and, once this yeah. article was posted they ran from this like the plague yeah they did yeah because they weren't just focusing on men in prisons they were actually when you talk about made to penetrate mm -hmm. they were also showing the ways women engage in it it was just and, and i even saw stats that scholars feminists would put up to say 99 percent of grapes uh, occur from men to women but that's one of the reasons they created the made to penetrate category because they were discarding so many different uh accounts that didn't right. have a classification formally but when they finally started to include them, they found that the numbers were almost equal. This means that from 1930 onward, yeah. men's experiences were eliminated mm -hmm. from the discussion. So think about that. If there are almost equal rates, and, and keep in mind, men have not been socialized to report this the way women have. Yeah, they get laughed at. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if the numbers are almost equal and men haven't even been socialized to report, yeah. what would happen if we could actually go back from 1930 onward and present the real data? yeah women would actually be looked at differently very much so mm -hmm. very much so um let me see let's see where did it go eh, hold on okay let me pull this out shout out to uh lapd swat one is why are blacks bad at setting boundaries i.e from the european arrival at liberals uh only two liberals current policies if corrected um to focus on black men good because black men have always been the the uh the designated underclass and designated boogeyman for the last 300 years so it mm. goes against policy and culture there it is mm -hmm. thank you for that uh and i want to point out one other quick one right here if you go up to the the third bullet point from the bottom as criminologists Richard Felson and Patrick Cundiff report in a fascinating recent analysis, a 15-year-old male is considerably more likely to be likely to be sexually assaulted than a woman over 40. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just wanted to put that out. So that's that's important to know and important to understand. And it goes along with what I just showed as far as the CDC numbers, right? But again, we're debunking stereotypes. And when you factor in the percentage of black men that are incarcerated, um, you know, based on the numbers, you find that black men are actually the most vulnerable, even in regard to sexual assault in prison. Mm. Shout out to ghetto users. I was really preaching tonight. Appreciate that.